to thought for the day. Um, as we're in this period after Pentecost, where we've been celebrating and giving thanks to God for the pouring out of his gift, his spirit upon his people, um, I thought to take us somewhere that uh, we actually went on the Wednesday after Pentecost with the Wednesday prayer group. It might be a place that not many of you have been. It's Numbers 11, and we meet a couple of guys called Eldad and Medad. Um, it's from that period of um, the Israelite history where they have been freed from Egypt. They're in the desert. They're making their way to the Promised Land. And um, it's a period of grumbling, though. It's a period of grumbling at the beginning of Numbers 11 in verse 1. Uh, the Israelites are talking about the hardships they're suffering um, in this desert journey towards the promised land. They're craving other food. Now, they've been given the manna um, as a gift from God, but they're fed up with it now. They're looking back to Egypt and they're remembering the fish, the cucumbers, the melons, uh, the onions and the garlic, amongst other things that they used to enjoy. They seem to have forgotten um, the horrors of slavery and captivity, the way they were oppressed when they were in Egypt. And so Moses calls his elders together. Let me just read uh, from that passage for you. I'm going to read Numbers 11, um, starting at verse 24. Numbers 11, verse 24. So Moses went out and told the people what the Lord had said. He brought together 70 of their elders and made them stand around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke with him. And he took of the spirit that was on him, that was Moses, and put it on the 70 elders. And when the spirit rested on them, they prophesied, but they did not do so again. However, two men whose names were Eldad and Medad, had remained in the camp. They were listed among the elders, but did not go to the tent. Yet the spirit rested on them, and they prophesied in the camp. A young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, son of Nun, who had been Moses' assistant since youth, spoke up and said, Moses, my Lord, stop them. But Moses replied, are you jealous for my sake? I wish that all the Lord's people were prophets and the Lord would put his spirit on all of them. So he calls the elders together and God takes of his spirit that is resting on Moses and, and shares it with the 70 elders who then start prophesying and speaking out God's word. But this, the context of this is it's in the midst of this trouble. As I've said, Numbers 11 they're grumbling about the food. They're sick of manna. At the beginning of chapter 12, we find Aaron and Miriam uh, rebelling against Moses, speaking against Moses, the Bible tells us. In chapter 13, the spies come back. They've been scouting the promised land. They've come back scared and terrified. They've seen giants there, even though they've seen huge uh, uh, flourishing harvests. They come back terrified. And um, they're too scared uh, to recommend the Israelites going forward and taking the promised land. So how does God respond to all this? Well, in verse 20, with an odd sort of generosity, they've asked for meat and he said they shall have meat. They'll have quail. But verse 20 says they'll have it till it's loathsome to them. I'm going to give them so much. They're going to be sick of it. Um, he's been generous with the manna. They got sick of that. He's leading them out of slavery in Egypt. They seem to have forgotten that. So he says, I will give them meat. Um, but it's going to become loathsome. So there's a generous heart, but God still seems to be trying to teach his people something. But also he, he takes the leaders and he pours out his spirit on them. Um, partly, verse 17 tells us, to help Moses bear the burden of this leadership. So God has been generous, pouring out his life, um, his spirit. 
even in the midst of rebellion. And so as they're there, and they are prophesying, speaking out the word of God, the spirit falls on them. We're told it may not have been 70, it could be 68, because Eldad and Medad were missing and they'd been caught prophesying in the camp. Now, isn't it interesting that two of the elders were not in the tent of meeting, the place they went to meet God. They were in a surprising place. They were back in the camp, but the spirit still fell on them and they prophesied where they were in the camp amongst the people. Somebody runs back and tells Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp and Joshua, Moses' successor, the one who would lead Israel, says, Lord, stop them, stop them, my Lord. Isn't it interesting that, that God appears to be doing something in the camp? God is, there's a move of his spirit among the people and the elders are saying, stop it. And, and hasn't that been, you know, in too many ways, the sad history of the church, God begins new things. It doesn't matter what those new things are, whether it's new styles of worship or new styles of services or new buildings, you know, whatever it might be, new ministries, new missions. And a first reaction can just be, stop it. And it's, isn't it an easy thing to say when we don't understand what God is doing, when we don't feel completely in control? The tent of the meeting was the place where the worship happened. It was the place where they met with God. But all of a sudden, two men are in the camp, outside of church, if you like, meeting with God, prophesying, pouring out his spirit. And to me, it's just a timely reminder that as we say at Pentecost, come Holy Spirit, thank you, Lord, that he will do the most extraordinary things. And we need our eyes open to see what it is that he's doing. It's so easy, isn't it, to say, stop it. But Moses says, I wish all God's people would become prophets. All God's people. Well, of course, we know, don't we, from Acts, um, as Peter quoted and was preaching in the marketplace, that lovely promise from Joel that he quotes. And um, in the last days, God says, I'll pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, young men will see visions, old men will dream dreams. I will pour out my spirit in those days, even on my servants, both men and women, and they will prophesy. God is saying, I'm going to pour myself out to my people without limit, without hesitation, holding nothing back. And therefore, as God does this, we, we mustn't be surprised when he does new things. We must never be a people who are saying, stop it. Now, there'll be things we don't understand. There are things I don't understand about youth ministry as someone who's now 68 years old. There's things I don't understand, but there are youth pastors and ministers doing great jobs with young people. We need to release and enable them. We need to release and enable the new things. Some of you may have heard that uh, there is some tension in the diocese at the moment over management and oversight, and uh, two of our bishops have had to stand back for a while. Now, I don't understand that. I don't know all the details. I don't need to know all the details. What's God up to? I don't know. I just know that we should be praying. And uh, saying for our diocese, for our church, for our benefits, for our ministries, come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit. We don't always understand, but come Holy Spirit. I'm still struck by the elders being in the tent of meeting, thinking that they were the ones in control, they were the ones that God was visiting. Eldad and Medad were in the camp. The spirit fell on them. They were prophesying among the people. Where is God at work? Where is God at work? In our diocese, in our benefice, we may not always know. We may not always know. But we can trust God, who only gives good gifts to his children. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh.
So, Father, as we pray for ourselves, for our various and different ministries, as we pray for our parishes and benefits, as we do indeed pray for our diocese, we say, come, Holy Spirit. And, Father, give us the grace and the wisdom, Lord, to trust you even when we don't understand Help us to know, Lord, that you only give good gifts to your children. And you are shaping us and moulding us into the church that you long for us to be. Come, Holy Spirit, we pray. Come, Holy Spirit.